I'm Paul Mark Wallace, and I'm here for your raw reviews for March the 11th. Uh, I got the Randy Savage glasses on, and I'm in the wrestling mood, and now let's get this shit started. Start off with the uh, the Mortar for Paul Bear, which you know, I'm happy for because definitely, yeah, sad. But you know my feelings about that. If you watch my video about Paul Bear and my thoughts, and you know my memories, good memories about him. Um, and then no surprise that CM Punk comes out. You know, it's like I would like it more. If um, I didn't know this was going to happen, but unfortunately, you know, I knew it was going to happen. It was going to come out. I mean, that's the problem with this whole, you know, getting the kids, interrupt everybody, you know. Some people like it, but for me, I don't like it. It's just that I find it stupid. You know, I mean, if you did it once in a while, it would be okay, but he does it for everything, you know. In this one, I, I don't know, it's just, it's just the WWE trying to make you know, more off this feud now because it's Paul Bear's death and all that, and they're trying to cash in basically on his death. So, I mean, whatever, basically. That's my opinion on it. Just read it. So, after that, you know, he starts saying, oh, you know, you're going to lose that that's the same heel crap, blah, blah, blah. Kane comes out behind him with a fire, you know, blasting. Punk freaks out. Now, basically, you know, he can't go pissed off at him, and basically he goes after him, tries to choke slam him, and gets away, and runs off the stage, and Kane's all pissed. He gets a little faster than Kane. You know, a little angry Kane here, not this PG for the Barney one, motherfucker. Yeah, after that, we got Seth Rollins versus The Big Show. You knew what was going to happen, so I mean, it's not really a surprise that, you know, The Big Show gets disqualified and um, just gets beat up on him. So, no surprise there. Uh, Trip the Powerbomb. You know, you're going to see this probably like five more times before Mania on Big Show, just to show how, you know, awesome these guys are. I like the Shield, quite frankly, but I mean, just doing the same thing after the same thing is kind of a little repetitive and boring. Yeah, then after that, I believe you get to CM Punk talking to the Guerrero after, you know, Kane starts just fighting the people in the locker room looking for um, CM Punk. And basically he's saying, oh, you know, what, what the hell is, you know, why are you trying to kill me or blah, 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 or some shit. And then Ricky just puts him in a no disqualification match to Kane. Yeah, right. After that, you get Dolph Ziggler versus Daniel Bryan. This was a good match. Um, a lot of high spots. This match, I liked it. Great technical and all that good stuff. And Ziggler finally gets the win. That's the most boring thing right there. You know, Mr. Money Bank, the guy who's supposed to trade a really good wrestler and probably the future of the company or whatever, and he's freaking losing every match is bullshit. But yeah, you give him the freaking win here, and I mean, it's all the damn time. You know what I'm saying? And, <laughs> and after that, you got um, Sweet Cheese, or formerly known as Tensai, or formerly known before that as Albert. Basically, in the ring, he's going to face uh, Fandango, and then, you know, they do this stupid uh, heel tactic again with Fandango. You know, you can't say my name, I'm not going to dig you, blah, 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 that bullshit. And um, I'm getting tired of this, right, Frank? I don't really like the guy. I mean, Johnny Curtis, really. You know what I mean? It's like a freaking Spanish version of your brother's play. You have brother's play, you say it, I don't know. But, I mean, it's just like a stupid, you know, gimmick. Stupid freaking heel shit, you know. It's just bullshit, man. So, I mean, you can't say his name like everyone else can. Not do it, and then freaking, yeah, that's what happened. So after that, we got the New Age Outlaw versus the Rogue Scholars. Initially, I thought this was going to be a match for the Rogue Scholars to beat the New Age Outlaws. I think that would probably be the better way to go with this. You know, try to get the youngsters to win. You know, build them up some credibility, even though you keep splitting them up and then putting them back together every freaking week. I don't understand that. But you know how WWE loves their young talent, so they don't do that. <laughs> they love them so much. So what they end up doing is having Brock Lesnar come out and beat up the New Age Outlaws. This makes sense in the respect. And I'm not upset that he did this because, you know, it's Triple H's friends just being a Triple H friend. I don't have any problem with that. It's what they did after with him. You know, for, that's what I had a little problems with. Um, so Brock Lesnar goes, you know, he basically comes to the ring. Um, this is after Road Dog got dis had disaster caper coach. He's down. Still again, trying to check on him. Lesnar comes out. <laughs> Cody's face was kind of funny when, you know, he saw Lesnar coming. I was like, oh my god, what do you But um, and then he comes down the ring, he knees. You know, Billy Gunn tries to fight back, but you know he's going to head to those freaking knees of Lesnar, you know, and then they kind of crash again. Yeah, I was just going to do some power stuff or, I don't know, clothes on or something, but um, yeah, it's just gimmick, I guess, and that's going to be just alright. Then uh, he does the F5 to Billy, then he does the F5 to Road Dog, and then Paul Henry freaking booked up a great promo, I would say that. You know, he's one of the best talkers out there. He really sold out one. I mean, he's a guy, Will Sexer's thing. But he, you know, he had to sign the contract, and we'll make the stipulation after he signed the contract. So I like that. So I guess the contract signs next week, which I like. Uh, and then, um, 
get Mark Henry versus Kofi Kingston, you know, get some different entrances like they always do. And Kofi Kingston is a fucking jobber now. Never thought it was gotta be a main event. I mean, this guy can jump a little bit, but I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. So Mark Henry comes out, you know, and his old and his whole entrance now. I mean, I used to love his entrance when because the camera's behind him. His T-shirt had that freaking um, words on the back. It was like all shell stuff or something like that. But now it doesn't have any um, words on the back. So what's the point of that entrance? Just show at the front, I guess. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, Kofi Kingston, you know, loses, of course, and I get the little high spot where he jumps and knocks down Mark Henry, and of course he tries to do a his like signature uh, crossbody and he gets caught by Mark Henry, and he does the little strong slam. Basically a squash match, and that's basically what happened. And right after that, you know, they had building this whole thing about, you know, basically Ryback and Mark Henry. So no surprise, Ryback comes out after it. And he goes against three and B, of all people, of course. So he goes against Keith Slater. And basically, you know, I had no problem with him. I knew he was going to win. You know, he was going to squash him and shit. And he does a, I think he does a show cross and fell over, blah, blah, blah. And I think three and B go in the ring and he attacks him. So then Mark Henry comes in. You know, all shit just became serious. No, I think he's walking during the match, actually. Then the ring's still in bed, and then after he won, he's doing a few new moves, started walking down the ring. And they basically have, like, a stare down, you know, the old fashioned, you know, um, you know, it's kind of reminds me of, like, kind of, um, maybe like like, uh, Andre the Giant and, uh, Hulk Hogan. It's a bad comparison, I know, but it's just, like, you know, the removable object is Mark Henry, and it's just, I don't know, it's just, I don't know why I said that, but whatever. Uh, basically they have a little stare down, and basically they just take a part of freaking, uh, the freaking, <laughs> forgot his name, the chosen one, McIntyre, there you go. And basically they do the finishers, the, you know, uh, Mark Henry does the little song slam on him first, and um, he does the shell shock on him. And after that, Mark Henry does it again, and Michael Cole says something stupid, like, I wonder who won that one. I was like, well, Mark Henry did two finishers, so, you know, whatever. And what to do afterward is so stupid. It's so fucking stupid what to do with these guys. That's a mania match. You shouldn't have to do anything else with it. It's just mania, mania, mania. Put those guys in the match, have right back to the show shock and Henry or Henry Dugan. To have some, you know, worthy event. And freaking they end up making the match in freaking SmackDown. What the fuck's the point of that? Like seriously, I don't understand. I know probably it's going to have it probably just slow off the case or one set. Some shit's going to happen. It's fucking bullshit though. You know, hype this match. You got people who kind of want to see this. You know, no one really likes Ryback that much, but they like to see him versus Henry because he's two powerhouses. Why would you put him on freaking SmackDown just so, you know, freaking one guy can get over or freaking what be disqualification? There's no freaking point. Save this for freaking WrestleMania. Hype the crap out of this match. Have them beating up each other's opponents and shit. Do these stare downs here and there. They're building tension last week from Raw about this. This was perfect. Really setting up. I mean, I wasn't even really caring about this match, but come on, you gonna put on SmackDown, free TV? Come on, give them a re- give us a reason to buy the pay per Fucking bullshit. I think I yeah, probably already passed it, but um, they had a promo versus the Rock and Team. I skipped that, okay, because I didn't want to watch it. I know it's fucking an ass, that mania, and it's no point in fucking getting into it. You know that, so leave that outside. Okay, so Alberto Del Rio versus U.S. Champion. I think they do a little preview of a movie. I think it's a fucking how good movie to come out the call. Pisses me off because, of course, you take the freaking entrance away from Cesaro. You know, you're trying to make this guy presentable. And they, I think he's a pretty good talent. And they end up freaking just. <laughs> they end up screwing him over again and not having an entrance and then having him drop to, um, Brett Del Rio. It wasn't a surprise. Uh, it was an okay match. Um, he did the elbow. I think my ending I thought was going to happen was, you know, it's going to be like last week's where he's going to put the neutralizer on Brett Del Rio and he's going to spin down to the cross arm breaker. But I have one problem with this match, though. Freaking Tony Cesaro, when he locked in a cross arm breaker, he, he didn't pull back the arm and freaking... <laughs> he didn't pull back the arm and he tapped out. His arm was like this. See it pretty well. It was like this. When you do the cross arm breaker, your arm is extending like that. Hyper extend. You see that, whatever. I don't care. His arm wasn't extending. He was tapping out. He was in serious pain. You know, I didn't like that at all. And then I think after this, to do is that Coulter parody or whatever. Where, you know, Ricardo's the fat, <laughs> fat dude with the beard, he put way too much hair on him. I like this, okay. And now, uh, Bertha Del Rio was freaking swagger. They put some Mexican shit in there, of course, they're gonna keep that. It's in there, Mexican, blah, blah, blah. And they gave a little, uh, preview or a freaking, 
a little promo before that and said, oh, you know, I was born in Mexico and I was made in America, so it was okay. Then I think they have a backstage segment before this or after this. Um, basically, Cody Rhodes and Caitlin. He says the most cheesiest thing about his fucking mustache. Like, you know, stop with this whole mustache bullshit. I mean, it's funny. You know, guy's someone better. I mean, he's just fucking childish looking and fuck. <laughs> Caitlin's like, oh, yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's funny. Ho, ho, ho. You know, it's retarded and, um, you know, he gives her water. Jamie Candell becomes, <laughs> it was pretty funny. That's when he takes the water away, the jewels, you know. He's like, oh, you're welcome. I thank you or some shit. You know, I'm parched. You know, blah, blah, blah. Then he got the Bella six back. And they brought him back. Not he then, but WWE brought him back for some reason. Um, okay, it's good for the tag Divas division. Get someone new there, I guess. Should have been there, but hey, whatever. So they're back. Um, I think he tore his back. <laughs> Please. So they're back. Uh, they're back on a double day or whatever. Then Vicky Guerrero interrupts them and he's like, okay, you know, um, you guys ain't finished today, you know, and you're freaking. You can't go into double day because you're going to face the Breakfast Club, basically, with Sheamus and Randy Orton, which fucking irritates me. Yeah, I mean, from a night where I thought they were going to go over the New Age Outlaws, one of the best tag teams and my favorites of all time. They go from that, you know, for a point actually making legitimate contenders for the tag team title, you know, respectively. And the freaking package them against the freaking two guys that never fucking lose cleanly, and fucking that's how it goes. I mean, why would you fucking do it to young talent? I've been telling Cody Rhodes about Young Town for a long time. I mean, for like five years now, and freaking they still haven't used them. I thought, you know, after you beat freaking Raymond Steele at WrestleMania, they're going on top or something. This guy should have been watching with Jenny by now if they package him, right? But no, you end up freaking putting against the guys that keep winning over and over again. You guys want to keep in the spotlight, and you're never going to bring anyone else into that freaking spotlight. And that's what freaking kills me. You know, like I said, it went from a night where they can look really good to a night that was like really shit. That's fucking bullshit. So, of course, Seamus versus Randy, Seamus, Randy Orton beats crap out and do this. I can't remember which half. I know Randy Orton did RQ, I believe, on Rhodes, and then um, Seamus did the broke kick on, on, um, <laughs> God damn it, broke the horse. Sorry, I just can't think about it no more. It's, it's so irritating to me, once again, these guys, Damian Sandow, I love Damian Sandow on that promo, <laughs> it's pretty fucking good. Yeah, that was pretty funny. This guy should be used more. Play Intercontinental Champion soon, I would like that. Or maybe maybe uh, Money in the Bank, I don't know. So then they have the highlight reel with um, Chris Jericho. I love how they brought that. It was kind of fucking stupid. I mean, they they, they had the promo about, you know, Wade Barrett and The Miz being on there. Which I know it's all about movies and shit. They're both being in movies now. But then, you know, The Miz comes out and he starts talking about his movie. Then Wade Barrett comes out laughing. And they're all surprised, like, what the hell is happening? You know, what the hell is he doing there? And when they're freaking having, like, you know, what the hell is he doing on there, even though he was freaking the one, <laughs> he was on the freaking car at the first place. This wasn't even a highlight, really. It should have been Miz TV or some bullshit. It's just a reason to get these two guys in there, blah, blah, blah. A big, um, fucking man, he's scared of fish off with the lights. Brad Maddox. He comes out and makes a match between uh, Jericho and the Miz. You know, and the winner faces his way bare for the title. Yeah, that should be a mania match. It's probably going to turn into a, you know, triple threat mania, probably. See, I mean, you're just putting people in the places. Place mania. Um, so they have their match. It's two faces going off, so you know some bullshit's going to happen. You know, it was kind of cool when they were trying to do their, finish, their submissions on each other. Even though the Miz can't really do a figure four well, that well. And basically, but before that, Brad Maddox said, they're freaking, I was trying to enjoy Brad uh, Maddox, and it was, you know what I mean? I mean, it's kind of stupid on the mic and all that crap, but the freaking Michael Cole just kept freaking ripping on his head. Like, oh, this guy, just, yeah, I had to stop. This is terrible. This is terrible. You know, just let this, this dude talk and get it over with, you know. Stop making this drag on, you know, with that bullshit, you know. So you got freaking um, disqualification in that match, you know, after Chris Jericho goes to Miz and to um, Wade Bear, who's sitting there commenting for some reason. So, you know, Wade Bear goes after both of them and starts attacking them, and then basically, um, then um, Jericho and the Miz get upper hand and basically just face his face is beating up a heel of course. Um, Miz does a full uh, crushing finale. Like, what Jericho was moved back to originally, so it's kind of funny to see these two guys in the same ring. He uses that move. Then you got Jericho using the code breaker, and that's basically it. They set up for a triple threat match, I believe, next week. I think this is then after that. I think it's when the the promo came up with um the Brick Del Rio and. He's up cold old crap and um so basically some colors in the ring, you know, and, you know. Basically then you got 
Jack Square coming out, you know what's gonna happen. Yeah. <laughs> Max again! Beaners! The cult are leaping up beaners all over the place, and you guys don't belong here. That stuff. I love the whole, yo, know, the whole story on this, but I mean, it's just, uh, you know what's gonna happen. Um, Sakara gets beaten up by Swagger, you know, he has some high moments, some low moments, and then bam, you know, Patriot Act. But then, and the Mexico doesn't know what to call it these days. I mean, he calls it a Patriot Lock, the Patriot Act. I don't know what it is either these days. I'm gonna say Patriot Act. It sounds better, but uh, yeah, so it makes um, Shrag look good, and then uh, I believe Rebecca Del Rio comes down there, and he ends up putting, I think, the cross on breaker on him. And then um, he gets, he's that Coulter kind of pulls him out, but then he just grabs the ropes and gets up. And then we get to the main event. It's uh, Kane, serious Kane. He's in a badass Kane. One nine only, as that once he's saying. Versus CM Punk. Uh, you know, no qualification match. Originally, I thought, you know, Jake Irvin came and got a team up to build so him or whatever, do the tombstone and have a little ceremony for him. But you know, it doesn't end up like that. Uh, match started pretty good, you know, the brawl and stuff, they're throwing stuff. Um, you know, he's attacking each other. Kane pissed off at him, you know, punch because he's got the hand or whatever. It gets kind of boring in the middle, you know, whatever. Uh, he does, punch does the elbow, he doesn't set up for it, he doesn't do the taunt no more, he just drops the elbow. That's what I'm pointing out. So at the end of the match, um, and Punk was like, he's getting ready to go to sleep and hear the Undertaker yell. And he's like, oh my god, what's going on? What's going on? Where is he? Where is he? And Kane show slams him and matches over. And the Undertaker starts coming down there and you know, doing a slow walk. It took 20 minutes to get there. And then um, CM Punk, you know, he's got this controversial whatever, a pretty kind of train in WWE. Hits Kane over the head with the uh, urn, starts beating him with the urn. And while that's happening, Undertaker's just walking one mile an hour. He doesn't even run down there. And that shows how great the brothers <laughs> And then, um, freaking CM Punk taking a page out of Kama's book, you know, Kama Mustafa's book, and he ends up taking the urn, he's like, oh, well, I need the urn now, you know, that's what's gonna take the urn, Paul Bear, and sit on Paul Bear's grave or whatever, and he's, I thought it was pretty fucking stupid, and I'm not going to say when that happens, but I guess the way that's the way WWE do it, uh, you know, I mean, it's like he has to come out every time there's like a moment, something happy moment coming out there to be a dick. He's a heel, I don't understand that, but, you know, every other fucking thing, he's a fucking tower. That's what I don't understand about this, and I don't really like about it. You know, I understand that he's a heel, though, past him, like a dominant heel or whatever, you know, he's six foot heel. And I, it seemed kind of retarded with him, you know, just interrupting everything, and then, you know, I'm badass, you know, I, and then, you know, when a match comes, he's fucking hiding under the covers, which I don't like, you know, uh, I mean, there's a lot of things, I like about Punk, most of the fans. But uh, I can make a video about that later, and there's no reason to get into that. And, um, other notes, uh, Triple H wasn't on this week. Uh, maybe it was a promo, I knew we got like I might have missed it. Um, Joe Cena, finally. Let me get that one-ass promo I fucking switched off. I think it was like five minutes long, probably, about redemption, I heard. Thanks, bad news are done, which is fucking bullshit. And that, that just shows you there's no heel turn coming. Yeah, everyone's hoping for a heel turn at WrestleMania. If we see It's Coming video, my video is coming. It is, because he's not turning here anytime soon, and, um, they're over cleaning on the rock. Which fucking irritates the shit out of me. You know, um, the rock wasn't there. Okay, I don't really care about that. You know, it's just mostly main. The show is basically focused around Taker and, um, Punk. You know, got thrown in because he had nothing else to do in Mania, and he's a big star. So originally got the main match with Taker, in my opinion. Um,. My thoughts on the whole thing, I mean, there were some bad things they did there, and especially like that with the world's dollars, they could have done way better with them. Um, out of 10 stars, I'm going to give this one... So now I'll tell you guys, and you know, I'm going to give Punk fans out, look at this thing. Alright, that's not my raw review, you know, like, subscribe, leave a comment, if I miss anything, I apologize, and um, I'll hit you back with more videos. See you.